Good morning, everyone. My name is Maria Trisha Angela Enriquez Kalingo, and this is my video montage. Enjoy! I was born in a provincial hospital in Pampanga, Philippines on September 25, 1995 at 8 o'clock a.m. to my parents, Maria Lourdes Enriquez Kalingo and Ariel Bacani Kalingo. My mom only spent 15 minutes in labor and I weighed in at a little over 6 pounds. When I was born, my dad had already been away for work at Guam for nearly 9 months. He was not physically present at my birth. When I was born, my parents already had two children who are my sister, Maria Graciela Carla, and my brother, Abriel Carlo. During the following year, I was basically raised in a single parent household until I turned one, which was the time my dad came to visit the Philippines and stayed for almost a year. Of course, during the days when my dad was away, my mom had help from both sides of the family. Because of all their support, I was able to gain basic trust as an infant and develop a sense of autonomy during my toddlerhood. I was baptized at a Catholic church. However, I never considered myself a true Catholic because I have yet to practice their traditions. I was able to sit on my own and began to crawl at six months. I walked for the very first time at age one. I spoke my first word, which was mama, at eight months. My mom said that I learned how to potty train when I was a year and a half because she wanted to save money from buying diapers. I went to Guam for the first time on June 1997 for six months, but because of Typhoon Paka, my parents decided to leave my brother and I at the Philippines under the care of my grandparents. During my early childhood, most of my time was spent alone in the care of other adults because both of my parents worked in the day and my siblings were at school. I went back and forth living in Guam and the Philippines. Fortunately, I was able to adapt to my changing environmental context successfully each time and became a sociable child. When I was in the Philippines, my grandma would have people come over to our house to tutor me. Then I began Head Start, which helped me develop more advanced cognitive skills. I was exposed to numerous books that I would have read to me and watched various educational shows as well. I remember seeking for a mother figure when I lived in the Philippines and believed that my Auntie Marianne was my mother because she was the one who spent the most time caring for me. But when my mom finally came to the PI to get me, I knew that I was reunited with my real mom. When I began to permanently live in Guam, my mother said that I spoke and had a mature attitude that was similar to that of an elderly lady. Maybe it was because I was so used to being surrounded by older adults during my stay at the PI. At this stage, I also loved to play make-believe, where my sister would be the teacher while I would be the student. During my early childhood, my baby teeth started to come out. Although I still have one strong baby tooth remaining with me till today, my mom said that I used to have a gap between my front teeth because I was still so attached to drinking my baby bottle back then. My middle childhood was my school years. I began kindergarten at Finnegan Elementary School. I was always a straight A student and constantly received multiple awards. My mom did not have problems taking me to class because I loved going to school. She says that it was because my classmates and my kindergarten teacher were very nice. During this time, I also began to gain more friendships outside my family circle. I also had a new addition to my family of five, a baby brother, Angelo Joshua. However, I also gained a rival, 
a competition for my parents' affections. Because my baby brother stayed at the Philippines for a few years before he came to live with us in Guam, it took years to completely diminish this one-sided sibling rivalry between us. I also noticed that my parents differ in parenting styles. To avoid being biased, I asked my mom what style they consider themselves to have. My mother is authoritative and my father is authoritarian. This can be the reason why I am closer to my mom rather than my dad. I also began to notice my physical changes during the late years of my middle childhood. I believe that I was an early maturing child and wore my first training bra when I was in the third grade. During the early period of my adolescent years, I was very self-conscious. I gained too much weight and had low self-esteem. I also began to skip meals. Luckily, I loved food a bit too much, so this phase only lasted for four months. I began to care less about school and rebelled a bit against my family. I also greatly relied on my friends because I felt that they understood me better. Throughout the following years, I was introduced to the Christian faith. Although with my father's disapproval of my decision, I now consider myself a Christian. During my sophomore year of high school, with the persuasive force of a good friend, I joined cross country, which became my first love-hate sport. I also joined track and field that same year. Running sports helped me improve my motor performance and influence my cognitive and social development. My self-esteem increased and I had a positive self-concept. I became more sociable and developed closer friendship ties within and outside of my usual circle. I also joined various clubs like DECA, took more leadership positions and began to value my education again. I was able to intern for Twinkles and Bestseller and received my first paycheck when I was 16 years old. I also unexpectedly began a romantic relationship during my junior year of high school. With his support, I joined rugby and immediately fell in love with it. Together, we also joined outrigger paddling for the first time, even though I did not know how to swim. I loved every moment of my late adolescent years. I turned 18 years old during the beginning of my senior year of high school. My senior year would have to be the most eventful and the most memorable year of my life. It was a whole package of happiness and sadness. Because I was of legal age, I began to go to dance clubs and continued to seek more independence. I achieved most of my goals, like receiving the most improved for cross country and rugby sevens, I was also selected for membership for the National Honor Society. I received a Mastery Certificate in Marketing and a Gold National Career Readiness Certificate. This period was also the year when I had my greatest heartbreak. On April 17, 2014, my boyfriend, Jeremy Joseph Jesus, passed away. His absence felt like an incurable disease to me. Although the days began to drag on and on, I tried my best to genuinely smile every day. It was especially hard for me because I was new to this feeling of grief, since no one I loved so much had passed away on me before. He was the first. But I was able to get back on my feet with the support from my family, my friends, and my mentors. As I began my first year of college at the University of Guam this year, I have decided to focus more on my education. I am pursuing a career in nursing and hope to one day travel around the world to help those in need. Although I am still in the process of identity moratorium, I am learning more and more about myself every day and I continue to appreciate the life that God has given me.